In this video, we are chatting about the Schedule D. The Schedule D is, um, it's, we don't see it used on a ton of uh, returns, but it's used on its fair share. So it's used in for the exchange of, uh, reporting the exchange of uh, like a capital asset, not reported on another former schedule. So if you, um, let's just say you, you got into a rental property, something that you purchased and you, made some money on it or you lost some money on it and you wanted to report that gain or loss you would go ahead and do that here so we in this scenario we had an investment property and we turned it relatively quick so we bought it on this date and we sold it on this date and we sold it for I don't know 285,000 and we did not receive a 1099 from it well in real estate transactions you would receive some sort of 1099 generally if you're reporting a uh, a gain but and the cost of that property was 225,000 so we made a quick uh, quick 60 G's that would be nice and we don't have any oops I screwed up there uh, 25 grand. We made our quick $60,000. Life's beautiful, and we don't need to make any adjustments to it. That would be that. Um, click save and go to another. Um, let's say we bought some other sort of asset, and you would go ahead and enter that. You can see our, our refund uh, quickly went away. You would go ahead and again enter that and enter the sales price, your base, your cost amount. If you made an adjustment, this is where things can kind of get uh, get tricky. To where if you're making an adjustment because the form that you received, right? So did you receive a form? Where was that at? Um, this form showed up incorrectly, and you need to make an adjustment. And do you need to go ahead and select why it is that you made that adjustment? So that's that's one thing. Um, very common is I didn't want to go back into that. Sorry. We're going to continue on. We're going to go into sale of main home worksheet. We see this one quite a bit. Very similar to the other. Um, you're just going to go ahead and put in the date that you purchased the property. Let's say we bought it back then, and the purchase price was two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars and the date that you sold it was in this current year right at the top of the year and the sale price was three hundred eighty-five grand you made a made a uh, a quick hundred G's well I shouldn't say quick eight years and we're not worried about any of that how many days did you live in your home in the five years so you would want to do um, the little calculation 365 times 5 we lived in it all the days that uh, that was our main home and how many days in the last five years did you own the home and we're good to go check here if you received the first time home buyer credit because you're going to end up having to pay it all off based out of the proceeds there and we'll say that we did not click continue and we don't need to make any adjustments. We it was for sale by owner, um, and so we're good to go there. Now we're owing a giant amount, which means that I screwed something up. So let's go back real quick. Basic info. That's what we're doing. And what did I screw up? Oh, that's right. So this box right here. Um, is qualify for the maximum exclusion. So do you qualify for the maximum exclusion? I failed to check that box, which is why we had a 20,000 something dollar uh, you know, net due. And uh, so I went back in, saw the fact that I screwed that up, checked that box, and now we're back down to the original amount that we had um, due prior to adding the form. So that was my bad. Hopefully we learned from my mistake and you guys don't repeat my mistake. Anyway, that is the Schedule D that we wanted to cover. Hopefully, again, you, you got a good feel for the form, how to flow through it, um, the different uses potentially, and um, you don't make the mistakes that I did. Hope you uh, have a great day, and thank you guys so much. Um,
Let's go get it.